In this class, we'll cover the theory of spring, like a brief in introduction to the spring framework. So spring is what is called as a dependency injection container or also an IOC container. IOC stands for inversion of control. In traditional programming, when you, when you didn't have spring, what you would do is you would create objects and if there are dependencies between objects, you would include one object in another, another object through either through uh, mostly through composition or association but with spring but if you do that there is a hard hardwired dependency between objects of different classes so in spring what you do is you do not create the objects but you just describe how they should be created you don't directly connect your components in the code but you configure them or you wire them in a configuration file called the spring configuration file and the spring container will then hook, hook up all these objects. So it will hook up all the dependencies. So if one object is dependent on another object, you don't do that in the code, but you specify that in the configuration file. The advantage of that is you don't have to recompile the code when you change any of those uh, wiring mechanisms. So in spring, there are two kinds of dependency injection. One is by using the constructors of objects and other is by using the setters of objects. So both the constructor and the setters have to be public and in constructor injection the dependencies are provided as constructor, construction para, constructor parameters and in setter injections we use the Java bean properties to set the dependencies. We will look, look at examples of both of these when we come to examples but at this point of time be aware that there are two kinds of dependence do uh, two kinds of dependency injection one is via constructors and other is via setters so there are many benefits of using spring the spring container will help you reduce the amount of code that you write yourself it will make your application more testable by promoting loose coupling and it also supports eager instantiation and lazy loading of services lazy loading means it will create and load a service only at the time when it is required. It doesn't do it when the application starts up. So that way your application can start up much faster. And another benefit of Spring is Spring has several modules but you can choose one or more of these modules. You don't have to choose everything. If, if, if there is some module that you don't want to use you can leave that module. And Spring promotes what is called as POJO programming. POJO stands for plain old Java objects. So these plain old Java objects are nothing but like simple vanilla Java objects without any dependencies on any application server like Tomcat or WebLogic. So with these POJOs you can easily write JUnit test cases so it makes your code more testable as well. So some of the uh, features of Spring are it is it's a very lightweight container it provides dependency injection or inversion of control then it has support for aspect oriented programming I will come to the details of that a little later then it acts as a container which manages the life cycle of beans and the configuration of application objects then it provides its own MVC framework then it provides transaction management support and it also provides exception handling for JDBC exceptions so there are seven modules of Spring. One is a core container which provides a bean factory, the application con context and the IOC and dependency injection. And the Spring context is a configuration file which helps you to wire all your beans together. And it also provides uh, ser uh, services such as JMS, uh, internationalization, uh, scheduling and so on. And then Spring also has uh, a module called Spring AOP and it supports AOP is used for transaction management, security, logging and performance gathering, performance metrics gathering. And then Spring provides its own DA module using it, ha it has a very good uh, exception hierarchy which uh, abstracts out 
all the exceptions thrown by different database vendors. And then Spring has ORM, the ORM module, which lets you integrate with Hibernate or Ibatis or JDO. And then Spring has a web module, <coughs> which is built on top of the application context module. So it will provide a context for different web-based application frameworks like struts or any other application framework. And Spring also includes its, its own MVC framework. Uh, MVC str struts is an example of an MVC framework, uh, but Spring provides its own MVC framework called Spring MVC. It is pre pretty much similar to struts. It is actually a little better than struts. Okay, so coming back to the core container, the co core container has the bean factory and the application context. So what is a bean factory? The bean factory is like a factory class which contains all the beans. It holds a bean definition and when the container asks it, it will instantiate the bean whenever it is required asked by the clients. And the bean factory can also create associations between all the objects which talk to each other. So the client doesn't have to hardwire the beans. It is done by the container itself, by the bean factory. And the bean factory also manages the life cycle of the beans. And then in uh, uh, every bean comes with five different kinds of scopes. One is singleton. So you'll have a single object per IOC container. Prototype means it will create a new object instance whenever you request a bean. And then the last three are, are, are with respect to web applications. So for a request scope, it, the, it, the life cycle of a request scope bean is the life of a, it's of a single HTTP request. Then if it is a session, its scope is for the life cycle of a HTTP session. And if it is a global session, it is generally used when you are using portlets and it is only valid in the context of a web, web aware spring application context. An application context is the same as a bean factory, but it is a more advanced form of a bean factory. So besides doing all the things that the bean factory does, it also provides some additional functionality. So some of the things that it does besides doing what a bean factory does, it lets you resolve text messages to support internationalization. So if you are building an application which, which supports languages from different countries, you don't want to hard code the names or the text messages. For every language, you want to store the text messages in a separate file and load it at runtime. So it also, also provides a way to load resources, file resources, and using JMS, JMX, it can publish events to beans that are registered as listeners. And uh, the application context can be loaded from the class path by using the class path XML application context, or it can be loaded from the file system by using the file system application context, or it can be loaded from an XML file, which is contained within a web application. So a typical Spring application, it has an inter like let's say you have an interface class which contains some abstract methods, and then you could have one or more Java classes which implement the above that interface. Okay, and those Java classes will have the method implementations of the interface that in that it implements, and then you have, you have to provide an XML file called the Spring configuration file in which you configure all the beans. You basically you say how the beans are wired together and then finally you have a client program which will use the interface methods by calling the beans from the spring con configuration file. Spring has support for uh, JDBC by using a class called as a JDBC template. So this JDBC template it converts the database data into primitive types or objects. It can also ex execute prepared statements or callable statements. And you can also do custom data error handling. And the main ORM supported by Spring are Hibernate and Ibatis. And for Hibernate, you can configure it by using the Hibernate template or by extending the Hibernate DAO support. 
So there's a class called Hibernate DAO support class. Transaction management in Spring can be done in two ways. One is a declarative transaction management and other is a programmatic transaction management. The declarative transaction management is non-invasive. So you can keep the transaction management code out of the business logic and it is not difficult to configure it. So as a Java developer, you are more concerned about writing the business logic. You don't want to write code concerning transaction management because that is that spans across the entire application. And then if you want to do any custom transaction management, you can always write your own code by doing programmatic transaction management. So AOP, whenever you have like cross-cutting cross -cutting concerns, like logging <coughs> or security, a cross-cutting cutting concern is something which spans across the entire application. So your application will need logging, it will need security, it will need transaction management, you may want to gather performance metrics. So this is a concern which spans across the entire application. So that's where AOP comes in. And the main construct of an AOP is the aspect. So AOP basically stands for aspect oriented programming. The aspect encapsulates the behaviors affecting multiple classes into reusable modules. So what is an aspect? An aspect is a modularization of a concern that cuts across the entire application. So the concern could be transaction management or security or logging. So you are modularizing the whole thing which spans across an entire application. Okay. Then you have what is called as a joint point. A joint point is a point during the execution of a program such as the execution of a method. In Spring AOP the joint point is always a method execution. And a point cut is a predicate that matches joint points. So a predicate is like a regular expression which can filter out different kinds of which will filter out the methods for which the advice needs to be executed. An advice is a behavior that you want to action you want to take by an aspect at a particular joint point. Okay? Let, let's say you want to log something before entering a method. So that's the advice that you want to apply. Let's say you want to start a transaction when a certain method executes. So that's advice for that particular method. Okay? And point cut ad identifies the method for which that advice needs to be applied. So you have to specify some filters which will filter out the methods for which the advice needs to be applied. And there are different kinds of advice. You have like before advice, after advice, around advice and so on. And then you have the concept of a target object. This is the object which is being advised by one or more objects. It's also called as advised object. And then there is a proxy object which is created by the AOP framework to implement the aspect that it that it is working on. Okay? And these aspects are linked by a process called as weaving, which happens either at compile time, load time, or runtime. Spring AOP generally does it at, does it at runtime. And the different kinds of advice are the before advice, which happens before a method is executed. After advice is after the method is executed. After throwing advice is after an exception is thrown, you want to apply an advice. And you can have an after finally advice, which runs after the finally block of an exception of a try catch block is executed. Or you can have an around advice, which will ha happen before a method is executed and after a method is executed. And then Spring has a concept of a web module, which provides context for different web based application frameworks like uh, Jakarta struts. So you can integrate Spring with Jakarta struts and there are two options in which you can do that, do this. There is something called as a context loader plugin. So you configure Spring to manage your struts actions as beans using the context loader plugin. And then you set the dependencies of those actions in a Spring context file. Or you sub subclass is the action support class and get your spring managed beans by using the get web application context method. 
And then Spring has its own MVC framework. MVC stands for Model View Controller Framework. And you can use different view technologies like JSPs or Velocity or Tiles. So we'll look at all uh, examples for all of these different Spring modules in the next videos.